Hi everyone and welcome back to MTV. This video is example number two right in our show that series. In this series what we're doing is we're just looking at how to answer show that type questions. Right. So the reason why we're doing this is because um, any question in the math exam that has the instruction show that has been found to be one of the most poorly answered questions and also one of the most skipped questions. Right. So what I'm doing in this little series is that I'm using four different examples to help you to see how when you're required to answer a show that question, right, you need to recognize that there is some sort of calculation that you have to go through right, in order to obtain whatever given results okay, that the examiner wants you to show. Right. So if you watched the previous video, we looked at how to show that a line okay, with a given equation is actually tangent to a circle. Now we are going to use an example where um, we are given a quadratic in terms of k, right? And the examiner is wanting us to show that this specific quadratic, okay, has imaginary, or in other words, non real roots, okay, only when k is in this solution set. Okay, so k, an element of negative infinity to minus 5, and then 6 to positive infinity. All right. Now, this shouldn't be a question that you really would struggle with, right? Um, I think the only thing that would make you stumble in this question is not knowing how to go about um, determining the nature of roots of a quadratic equation, okay? because that's essentially what they are asking you here. If you had to rephrase this question, this is the same as asking you to find the value of k, right, such that this equation, right, so this quadratic over here, right, so k plus 1 times x squared plus 4 root 7 of x plus k equals to 2, right, that this quadratic, okay, has non real roots, right. Now, they are just adding some terminology over here for you, right, depending on um, what your teacher has made familiar to you, right. Um, some of you might be familiar with the term imaginary roots, and some of you might just be familiar with the term non real roots, right. So, now that you know that, um, in order for you to find success in this question, right, is just to determine the nature of roots of this quadratic equation that has been given to you right over here. Right. And the answer that you must obtain is this solution set. Right. So if you obtain this solution set over here, right, which I've blocked off in red, then you've successfully shown that this specific quadratic has none real roots. Right. So let's go about actually determining the nature of roots of this equation. Okay. So one way to lay this out is to say, given k plus 1 times x squared plus 4 root 7x plus k is equal to 2, right? We can rearrange this, right, because we know that in order to solve for a quadratic, it always has to be equal to 0, right? So we can rearrange this by just moving this 2 to the left-hand side, right? So that will give us k plus 1, right? And notice that this k plus 1 is actually a coefficient to the x squared term, right? Plus 4 root 7x plus k minus 2, and now this is all equals to 0. Next thing to do is to add a little bit of an introduction or a heading to what we are going to be calculating now. Right? So we're going to tell our marker that we are looking for non-real roots. Right? So we're going to say for non-real roots, okay? We know the theory that the discriminant, right, of any quadratic that has non-real roots, right, that that discriminant is less than zero, or in other words, negative, right. So what we're going to do now is basically 
find the discriminant, right? And because we have these k's, right, it's going to be in terms of k, right? And then we're going to set that discriminant less than zero, right? So now what we're doing is actually moving away from the algebra that we we're doing in the beginning, which is just rearranging. And now we're going to be moving into the section of inequalities, right? So let's do that. Okay. So because this one is a little bit more complicated, I'm going to take the time to carefully identify my A, my B, and my C value. Okay. So I know that my A value is just the coefficient of my x squared term. Right? So there it is, right over there. Then I have a B value, which is the coefficient of my x term. There it is over there. Then lastly, I need a C value, which is any constants in this equation, right? And k is going to be a constant, so all of this, k minus 2, is going to act as the C value, right? So we said that this is A, that's B, and that's C. Right. So if just to remind you right, what we are really focusing on here was to identify the component in the general expression of the quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c. Right. We were looking right, to identify these components over here. Okay. So moving on. We are now going to write out the discriminant, right? You can start off by writing the equation of the discriminant. That's also fine. Okay, and we want to set this less than zero because we're looking for the specific result. Okay, so when we just substitute all these components that we identified, we have 4 root 7 as b, right? And that has to be squared. And then we have minus 4 times a, which is this bracket k plus 1, times c, which is now going to be this bracket k minus 2. Right. All of this now needs to be less than 0. Okay. So where are we now? Right. Now we are in a simplification step. Right. So what is the simplifications that we need to do? Well, there's two of them. The first one is to deal with this exponent over here, and the second one is to deal with the distribution of these two brackets. Right, so let's do that. When we square out this term over here, right, it's the same thing as just distributing this exponent of 2 both to the base 4 and to the root of 7. Okay, now when you're going to square this root of 7, you're just going to get 7. Right. So, which means that what we have now is 7 times 4 squared, right? And 4 squared is 16, right? So, onto your calculator, you're going to evaluate what is 16 times 7, and that's going to give you 112. Then we have minus 4, okay? Now, it's going to be a smart idea to now use square brackets because you know that you still have to distribute these two brackets out, right? So use a square bracket so that you are able to move on to the next simplification, which is the distribution of this negative 4. Okay. So inside the square bracket, what we're going to do is write down the result of distributing these two brackets. Okay. So that's going to be k squared. Okay, so then what we're going to have next is minus 2k plus a k, which is going to be minus 1k. Then lastly, we're going to have a negative 2. All right, so we close this round bracket and we close our square bracket. This is still less than 0. Right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to distribute this negative 4 into the bracket. Okay. So carrying on over here, what we now have is 112, right, minus 4k squared plus 4k plus 8. Right. 
this is now still less than zero. Okay, so let's collect some like terms, right? The only like terms that we have is these two constant terms. So we just have minus 4k squared plus 4k. Okay, and 112 plus 8 works out to be 120. Okay, so this is plus 120. This is still less than zero. Okay, so what are we going to do now? Right, um, we would like to work with a quadratic that has a leading term that is, you know, positive and also in its simplest form. Okay, so the smart thing to do is to just divide through over here okay by negative four right but you need to notice what we are doing okay what we have is an inequality right and what we are now choosing to do as our next step is to divide by a negative number right so we need to remember that whenever we do that this inequality sign has to change direction okay so when we do that division we'll have that k squared minus k right and then minus 120 divided by 4 is 30 okay so minus 30 right now this is now greater than 0 Right. And this change in direction of the inequality is one thing that a lot of students forget. Right? So don't forget that because then your solution is going to be completely wrong. Right? And we only change the direction of the inequality when we divide or multiply by a negative number. Right. So if we factorize the quadratic k squared minus k minus 30, we're going to get the two factors k plus 5 and k minus 6. Okay, and this we want to set uh, greater than 0. Okay, so what we're now going to do, okay, is notice the fact that what we have is an inequality sign, right? So instead of having an equal sign where we would have just two discrete values of k, right, what we need now is a range of answers for k. Right. And that will come from this interpretation of this inequality, and we are looking for um, where this inequality is positive, right? So greater than zero, right? So positive. Okay. Right. So in order to get to those range of answers, we need to find our critical values, right? So we're going to now write for our uh, marker that what we're doing now is looking for the critical values, and it's quite easy to find them, right? So you're going to say, for critical values, right? That's going to happen when these two brackets are equal to zero, right? So k plus five equal to zero, or k minus six equal to zero, right? So therefore, the first critical value is that k is equal to negative five, and the other one is that k is equal to six. Right. So now we all know that what we do with these critical values is that we jot them on the number line, right? Or you can draw a sketch because these two critical values are the x-intercepts, right, of your quadratic function. Which quadratic function? Of this quadratic function, k squared minus k minus 30. Right. So onto this number line, we're going to put here minus 5. And the other critical point or value, sorry, at 6, we need to evaluate both these brackets, k plus 5, k minus 6, right? And we need to evaluate the signs, right, in each of these three regions, right? Region 1, region 2, region 3, okay? And how do we go about doing that? Well, we just use test values, right? And test values are values that you pick within those three regions, right? So for the first region, okay, we're looking for a test value which is less than negative 5, right? So we can choose something like negative 8, right? We take that value of negative 8, that is now your k value, substitute it into this first bracket, k plus 5, right? You have negative 8 plus 5, right? Which is going to be a negative result. 
right? Now take that same test value and substitute it into the second bracket, k minus 6, right? So negative 8 minus 6 is still going to be a negative result. In between these two critical values, negative 5 and 6, let's pick a test value of 0, right? We substitute 0 into this first bracket, you can see very clearly you're going to get a positive result. If we substitute 0 in here, we're going to get a negative result, right? Last region, let's pick a test value, let's say 8, that's fine as well, right? So then 8 plus 5, right, is going to be a positive result, and 8 minus 6 is also a positive result. Okay, now we are not done, right, because this inequality came from the product of these two uh, brackets, so we do need to take an overall right sign. And that overall sign is going to come from the multiplication of these two signs in each region, right? So negative times negative is a positive, right? Positive times negative is a negative, and positive times positive is a positive, right? So now we already said that we are looking for um, where we have positive regions, right? So greater than zero. So starting from our critical values, right, we're going to start with open circles, and then we're going to identify the positive regions, right, which is this side and this side. Okay, so the mistake that you can do is to end your solution right over here, right? Remember that I even noted in the previous example, right, that we never just end our solutions in midair, right, which is expecting the marker, right, to make the conclusions for you. Right? Don't do that, right, because at the end of the day, you are the one who's writing the exam, right? so you have to make the conclusions yourself. Right? So what does this number line now mean? Okay, Make the conclusion. Right? It actually has to mean exactly what is inside of this red um, square over here, right? because that is what you are trying to show. Okay, So... If we look at the notation inside of this red box, right, they've used interval notation. So we are going to use interval notation as well. Right? So we're going to say, therefore, okay, k is going to be an element of, right, all the solutions, right, remember that when you're writing an interval notation, what you're doing is on this number line, you're coming in from the left-hand side and just recording the desired solutions, right? So if we do that, if you come in from the left hand side, you're going to see that you are grabbing all the solutions from negative infinity, right? Up until you get to this critical value of negative 5, right? But you're not going to include this uh, critical value of negative 5 because we didn't have an equal sign here at this step, right? So that's not included. Because it's not included, we use a round bracket. Okay. Now you see that you have a gap in your solution, so you use the symbol union, right, which uh, basically just says that we're talking about these first uh, solutions over here together with the second solutions that we're now going to state. Okay, So that's going to be, well, we skip over here and then we start off again at 6, but not including 6, right, and as we go off in this direction, right, as we go off, Right, you can see that you are going to go off to positive infinity, not included. Okay. So, because that is the conclusion that you got, and it's the same as what you were asked to show, right, then you can say that you are, you are successful right, at answering this question. Okay. So, that's it for today's video, Matriculants. I hope you learned something, and I will see you guys next time.